Hello and welcome to my AccuRanker tutorial where I'm going to give you a very quick walkthrough where you can get up and running and use some of the most popular features, especially when it comes to whether it's going to be ranking a YouTube channel, a website, and of course, adding your keywords. If you'd like to log in, you can use my link down below, or maybe you're just watching this to see how AccuRanker works. You can also use my link down below to try them out for free. Let's begin. So the first thing you might want to do is add a group. A group is a great way of distinguishing maybe separate domains, or maybe if you want to do one for YouTube channels channels, one for websites, however it's going to be. I already have one, so I'm just going to create a new one right here by going to groups and doing add group. For this, I'm just going to be calling it fitness because the example I'm going to be using is revolving around fitness. So I'm going to click on save here. Now that that has been added, let's click on fitness here. And what we can do is add our first domain. As you can see, there's not going to be a whole lot to do here because we haven't added anything. So let's click on the add domain button. And now here is where you can actually add whether it be a YouTube channel or domain. Keep in mind, if you want to use a YouTube channel, all you're going to need is the main YouTube channel for it. And what I did is create a specific little cheat sheet here. This is going to be for Legion Athletics and their YouTube channel. Just using them as an example because I like what they have to offer. I listen to their podcast every now and then. So let's say we want to use the YouTube channel. I'm going to copy this right here. And of course, I'm going to paste that in. It says when using a channel, you'll be tracking all the video URLs within your channel. If you want to learn more about integrating and how it works, you can do that. For this, I'm just going to give it a name. Okay, we have Legion Athletics YouTube. And of course, when we have our search engine, what we want to do is United States. We have, uh, you can do a lot of them, obviously, depending on where you are, or maybe if you're somewhere else and you still want to track elsewhere. But for me, being in the US, I'm going to click on English for Google, YouTube, and Bing. And of course, this is where you can choose where these are going to show up. So you can actually use your YouTube videos and see if they're ranking in Google or Bing. But just for the sake of this, you know, I would go to YouTube and say do desktop, add that. And of course, that's how we would go from there. So I'm just going to delete this just to show you how you can now do the desktop version. So let's delete this. So let's start from scratch here. Now we have the domain. Of course, this isn't mine. This is Mike Matthews. Like I said, he has a good website. I'm just using as an example here. We're just going to give this a display name of Legion Athletics. And of course, for our default search engine, I'm just going to scroll all the way down here. I can just type it in based upon where you are. Obviously, this can be different, but we have United States here, Google and Bing. So for this, obviously, YouTube isn't going to be available to choose because we don't have a YouTube channel there. That's just the reason why. So we can do Google, we can do Bing, we can also do desktop and mobile. For the sake of this example, I will do desktop and mobile. We can also ignore some of these settings if you want. That's going to be up to you, but I think it's just going to be fine to show you what it comes along with when it's in the default settings. Let's click on this here belongs to group fitness, uh, no Google business names, don't really care too much about Twitter handle and let's click on save. Okay, and just like that, what it's going to do is go to the section where we can add in our keywords. So if you want to connect to Google Search Console, you can do it here. If you already have loaded up all of your keywords in a CSV file, you can do that right there. But for me, I actually have them in a little notepad. I just got a few keywords here to show you. And what I'm going to do is paste these in here. You want to make sure that you do one per line and say if you are adding in manually, all you need to do is hit enter. And then, of course, next keyword enter and I'm just going to delete that because we don't want to track next keyword. Okay. So add search engine if needed, but this is going to be the basic stuff since we already have this. Uh, I don't want to ignore the share of voice. I think that's a very powerful feature. It gives you an idea of like how well you're doing with specific keywords where the more percentage you get, the better it's going to be. Nevertheless, let's click on add keywords right here. And let's refresh so that they can start loading here. So let's give this some time. And when it's done, I will be right back. Okay, and very quickly, just like that, what I can do is sort by the rank. So we get the best at the top. You're going to see this is going to be the share of voice here, where the higher this is, the better it's going to be. Usually the uh, the more powerful the keyword, the one that has the most amount of search volume and the higher up it's going to be, you're going to see these are going to be towards the top. You also have some of the SERP features here where it says you have the actual snippet, which is cool. These are going to be some extra things. We have related questions. We have related searches for the carousel, and we have some thumbnails. What we can also do, something I like changing around before I get to that also, this talks about this is going to be the desktop version, and this is going to be the mobile version. So it depends on if you wanted to track those. I usually just go with desktop. I don't know what it is. I've been doing it that way for a while. I focus mostly on that, but you can obviously have both of those if you want to. Let's go to the table settings because I think this is something you're probably going to want to change around because you don't have to have all these in there. Now there's something else you probably want to change around. It's going to be the table settings. This allows you to change and take out any of these that you may like. So we have table settings right here. You can do default, 
uh, comfortable or compact. Compact is like really small. So if you look at this table right here, click on update, you're going to notice it gets a whole lot smaller. If you like it that way, you know, that's cool. But I'm just going to go back to update. I'm also just going to refresh this. And let's go back to the table settings. So here we have it. We have our domain. This is what we can utilize in this section here to maybe keep something here. So search intent, let's go back over here. This will tell you if it's commercial, if it's informational, and that's pretty much if you want to keep that there. You're probably going to know that yourself. So for me personally, I like taking that off. So we can do search intent, we can do update, and that'll get removed. Okay, so just less variables, less things to look at. And let's go by uh, best rank here. So table settings. We also have description, we have location, we have rank, probably a very important one. You'll probably want to use that URL, you know, usually don't need, especially if you're trying to rank for say long head triceps exercises, that's probably going to be in the URL. So I feel like it's just too much uh, searches. If you want to keep that, that's up to you. You can also do CTR, the AI SOV, the cost per click, add competition, the share of voice, traffic value, cert features created on age and action. So what you can do, if you ever want to see some of the first keywords that you ever uploaded, you can do created on. And what you can do is just sort that by some of the older keywords. If you ever want to go that way, that's how you would do that. Obviously, you can't do a whole lot with that information given the fact all these keywords were added today, but that'll get more useful, say, in years if you want to see how some of your oldest keywords were when you first imported them into AccuRanker. We can go back over here to table settings once again. So let's say we want to take that out. We have search features, excuse me, SERP features, which we talked about before with snippets and so on and so forth. We can do that. We do that. Great. And of course, this is going to be where we can either show SERP result. And as you can see, that's going to be it right there. Let's go back over here. And this is going to be the refresh keyword. I love this feature because say maybe Google is uh, going crazy. They're having an algorithm change or an update. Maybe you got some backlinks and you just want to check out your keyword a little bit more. All you have to do is just go to it, click on the refresh button. And what it'll do is recheck that just specifically. So you can see if there's been any changes or maybe sometimes, you know, it isn't where you want it to be. Maybe you just want to reload it. Whatever the reason is, you can just go in, refresh it, give it a few more seconds, and it'll show you what's going to be the updated ranking for it. Okay. And just like that, I believe we're on number one now. So we can actually check this out. Let's see what it looks like. There we are. So things can change around. So keep that in mind. Sometimes I've noticed when you first put keywords in, you might have to just give them one refresh because they might not be completely up to date. As you give it more time, I notice it gets more accurate and accurate as it kind of sits in its specific spot unless it changes it around. That's just been my you know view point of view when it comes to using this. Something else I do want to talk about is say the ability to star keywords. Let's say these are going to be our two most powerful keywords. And then maybe we have some that we're looking to rank higher. Maybe we're going to send some backlinks to them. What we can do is click on the star button. So we're going to have all of our important ones, say our money keywords, the ones we're really putting a lot of time and effort in. We're optimizing them. We're sending more links to them. What we can do is just filter them. So this is going to be much more beneficial when you have like thousands of keywords, but what you can do is click on starred and you can see all of the most important keywords that you have, given the fact that you have starred them, you can see how they're doing. Obviously, if you click on them, there's not going to be a whole lot of data, but what it'll show you every single day, it'll add another day and show you where the rank is. And it'll show you over time how it goes up and down. And of course, we have some more information down below in case you wanted to check that out as well. So what we can also do is just remove this filter. There's also going to be the ability to add tags. For example, say we want to add tags to all of our specific muscle building exercises. So for this side delt exercises, this could be anything shoulder related. So if we want to add tags to this, what we can do is we can do edit, add tags, Let's do shoulders, click on enter, and then do add tags. You're going to see now we now have uh, shoulder tags right there. So long head triceps exercises, this is going to be safe for triceps. So let's do add, we can do tags and triceps. So maybe you're like really trying to niche down. Not only are you wanting to become an authority on fitness, but exercises and say like tricep exercises. So you can categorize them all that way if you want. So if you want to filter them, what you can do is buy tags. And of course, choose your tags. We have triceps. And of course, uh, once again, this is going to become much more beneficial when you have so many keywords, when there's only like 10 in there, not a big deal, right? But as you get deeper and deeper into it and creating more content, it's going to be much more helpful. Once again, we can remove that filter and of course, go from there. Should you want to remove these as well, you can just simply click on the X right here and get rid of those and then just go like that. What you can also do is do control find 
And what you can do is just say calorie. If there was a specific article or keyword you were looking for, type it in that way. And once again, this is much more beneficial once you have just a ton of keywords instead of kind of roaming through and scrolling through, you can just search for them that way. One more thing I do want to bring up is going to be the competitor analysis. So what we can do is bring this over right here to competitors. And I have a couple of them already. So I just found two that were going to be on the page. And this will help you see how you're doing, especially if a competitor has a lot of the keywords that you are ranking for as well. So let's add competitor. All right, so we have powerlifting technique. We gave him a name and let's do save. And what I want to do is says give it about 10 seconds, maybe a little bit more. Let's add one more. So add competitor and let's do save. Great, so let's reload this. Oh, there it is. And what we can do while that loads, I just want to show you the overview of this just to kind of give you an idea of other things that you can do. If you want to connect it to your Google Analytics, you can do that there. To the Search Console, you can do it right there. And this is going to give you an overview of just about some of the main things and the most important things that are coming along with your website, whether it be the traffic value, the share of voice, which I've talked about a lot, average rank, how many are going to be above the fold, and of course, your average click-through rate. So this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, this is the first day, but as you can go, you can can see a lot of data based upon when you want to look at that, your average rank as well. Some of your top winners and losers, of course, this gets better as you go along with the day because some are going to go up, some are going to go down, some you can celebrate with, and some you can just shake your fist at Google and wonder why they have to update the algorithm so much. Okay, this is going to be compared to your competitors and some of the similar keywords that they have, your ranking distribution, search intent. Share of voice, of course, we had our tags, but we deleted them. Or of course, we have organic traffic. If you want to connect to Search Console or the analytics right there, it says it shows the historical evolution of traffic from search engines registered by GA, Google Analytics, and the Google Search Console. So you're going to get some more accurate data there. We also have some dynamic top 10 competitors. Aside from the ones that we have in there, there's going to be a few more to kind of measure up and see how you're doing. We have our search trend notifications, nothing going on there. There's one more thing I want to bring up, which is going to be keyword discovery. So this is going to be beneficial because it's just going to give you a ton of keywords that you can pretty much add to your keywords in the first place. So maybe you didn't realize you're going to be ranking for these. As you can see, they have quite a lot of them here once again, and it's going to go on for quite a few pages. And by quite a few, looks like 2,808 pages here of specific keywords that can be added in case you want to track them. Now, for example, if this was your website and you had 2,808 pages worth of more keywords, it doesn't mean you need to add all of them. In my opinion, I like tracking the keywords that count. The ones that I want to see, are they going higher? Are they going lower? I want to monitor them. That's obviously going to be up to you, but I feel you don't need to track and monitor every single keyword possible. But this is going to give you a good idea of some other keywords that you might be ranking for and didn't realize. And of course, you can always add those to the tracker itself. All you need to do is click on the specific one that you want to do, maybe two, maybe three, click on import keywords. And of course, it's going to be the same process where we add them in and then of course, add keywords just like that. And that should just about do it when it comes to this AccuRanker tutorial. I hope it helps you get up and running when it comes to maybe a YouTube channel or just a website. And you can do a lot of the basic things such as adding keywords, whether you want to see that on the desktop or mobile, whether you can change around some of your settings, what some of the settings do, how you can integrate, and of course, adding competitors and using a few other smaller features when it comes to AccuRanker. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I hope you got some value out of this video. My name is James and I will see you in my next one.